Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Helen Chen, and uh, I'm a lecturer in planning and environmental management. Um, today, I'm going to talk about uh, um, GIS, uh, GIS and uh, health inequality. And um, uh, we do a lot of uh, spatial planning and spatial policy and analysis things. Uh, so um, we want to use GIS to inform policy making, uh, decision making. Um, especially relating to public policies. Um, so, um, before I um, talk about some of our research, uh, firstly, I just wanted to briefly uh, mention some um, background relating to spatial inequality, particularly uh, um, how it is related to GIS. And um, health inequality actually is a very complicated uh, issue. Um, it is shaped by um, the characteristics um, when um, that are born with us and uh, for example like our genetics and uh, also individual level behaviors, how we do exercise, physical activities, etc. At the same time, it is also related to a lot of external factors like the social and environmental factors. and. Um, so I have to um, highlight that uh, health inequality is both a people and a place concern. And previously, uh, a lot of um, public health um, research, they use individual level measures to examine um, how different factors are related to health outcomes. However, I have to highlight that health is also related to those external, for example, um, environmental factors like uh, the built environment, how it is um, uh, look like, and also like the uh, different uh, types of land use, your accessibility level, etc. So that's why we need something go further that it can capture uh, geography-based uh, uh, indicators. So GIS as a tool um, that can capture um, the spatial um, element of the neighborhoods of the communities and uh, come out um, as the key word here because it can help us to investigate geography-based and population-level health inequalities. And sometimes um, I remember uh, Johnny at the beginning. He mentioned that uh, population, like individual level data, cannot be like um, easily aggregated to um, uh, like a population level. But at the same time, I have to say we can actually use multi multi level data to understand how these interactive um, effects between space. And especially multiple levels from individual to neighborhood to uh, local authorities and even to uh, different regions. So um, I'm going to use a few examples from um, my current and previous research projects um, to tell the story. And the first the key message, um, GIS is a tool to map and visualize health inequality and relationships with other socio-demographic and environmental variables. So um, the, the first few examples are related to health outcomes and uh, socio-economic variables. Um, these are from a research project so I am working on, uh, which uh, is led by my colleague. And uh, this project is support, uh, funded by medical research uh, council and uh, we actually work with uh, different partners like uh, GNCA uh, Transport for Greater Manchester to look into um, spatial inequality of different health outcomes and how different socio-demographic and the built environmental factors um, are related to these uh, different patterns. And here from these two maps you can see the left one shows the life expectancy at birth for males in different small area, middle super output areas in Great Manchester. And uh, based on our initial analysis, we find uh, that uh, income deprivation consistently correlates with different health outcomes and a very high correlation. And if you see 
this map, you can also see um, areas with lower life expectancy for males tend to be in the areas with uh, higher than inland uh, um, average level um, of income deprivation. And, and similarly, uh, we can also find this um, correlation between death rates from causes considered preventable and proportion of households in poverty. So the, here are other examples like a, a percentage of people in bad and very bad house and also percentage of households deprived in three dimensions. And this one shows the um, year six prevalence of obesity and the child poverty. Again, you can find this correlation areas uh, with higher prevalence of um, year six obesity level tend to be located in the areas with higher child poverty level. So another example is about respiratory disease. And uh, I think because most I think some of you are from like environmental background, the environmental science background, you know this better than me. And uh, there are a lot of uh, like uh, environmental um, variables that may be relevant to health inequalities. So one particular um, thing we think about could be air pollution because air pollution is also related to like transport and uh, the built environment, etc density, etc. And so we used, uh, um, we mapped some um, different variables relating to air quality like uh, PM 2.5 uh, level, PM 10, and uh, NOx, uh, NO2, and benzene, SO2, etc. And uh, we also run some very basic uh, correlation analysis. We can find uh, some moderate correlation between these different uh, uh, air pollution uh, indicators and uh, um, death rate from respiratory diseases. And uh, if you have a look at the maps, uh, you can also see their correlation, um, moderate correlation, like uh, in Manchester City, you can see those areas in darker color uh, with higher death rate from respiratory disease uh, tend to um, be in the areas with uh, higher average PM 2.5 level and also although this correlation is not uh, very strong as the income deprivation. So um, the second message um, I would like to highlight is uh, we can use spatial statistics and uh, spatial models to spatial statistical models to examine spatial inter interdependence as illustrated by Tobler's first law of geography. Everything in this space is related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. So there is some spatial interdependence. Um, in the space. Of course, this is also true for health inequality. So we use the, uh, this one is a local modern size statistic to identify hotspots um, of um, death from respiratory disease um, in Manchester. From this type of analysis, it's very clear we can see some high, high cluster um, represented by red color and also other like high low outlier, uh, low high outlier, low low cluster. Um, high high cluster means uh, these areas they are surrounded by also areas with high values. And high uh, low low cluster also like low values surrounded by low values. Low high plus outlier means low values surrounded by high values. Uh, basically, we can see, for example, deaths from respiratory disease, they are concentrated in Manchester, northern Manchester, and also somewhere in Wigan and uh, uh, Bolton. But if we, we try to link it with smoking prevalence, but this is for young teenagers. So basically, you can see uh, there is no relationship from space, from a spatial perspective. And it is true, and it also makes sense because um, that is death rate from respiratory disease, and this is um, year six, uh, years uh, fifteen, um, 
smoking prevalence. So maybe then we need to think about there are other factors driving uh, death from respiratory disease. And another example is uh, the percentage of people in bad and very bad health uh, based on census data 2021. And also we can see the clusters, um, particularly for Manchester, Greater Manchester, the clusters are concentrated in Northeastern Manchester City, uh, Rochdale, and somewhere in uh, Oldham and uh, Tingside. So we can also link different uh, indicators to uh, run some uh, cluster analysis. Um, this, is, this one is multivariate cluster analysis to identify some clusters that need more policy uh, intervention. For example, here the red color represents the areas that uh, have a um, higher death rate from respiratory disease, uh, higher income deprivation, household poverty, and also some uh, air pollution issue. So that is something we can um, use um, to talk with uh, policymakers to make them aware of this spatial inequality. Another example is from a paper we published in Journal of Public Health. Basically, we um, this is an exploratory uh, analysis uh, by looking into COVID-19 infections in back to 2020. And uh, we, uh, because of the data issue and also uh, considering different uh, like different policies uh, during um, that period, we um, run two um, sets of data. One is for period one, which is from March 2020 to uh, end of June, end of June 2020, and the second period is from July to the end of 2020. And you can see uh, by using the spatial statistics, we can identify spatial hotspots. And uh, for we used the. We used the, the, an indicator called the location potent of um, COVID-19 infections. It's a little bit different from just a COVID-19 um, like a infection rate. This one is a ratio of ratio. It's a very widely used uh, ge geographic index and you can use it to measure the relative concentration of COVID uh, uh, cases compared with the England as a whole. So we use this indicator, and then you can find that uh, for the first period, actually the hotspots are scattered to different areas, uh, particularly the northern England, with the um, M2, M62 a motorway corridor as the divide line. You can see it's very clear. Uh, for the southern area, only Kent has these hotspots. And the um, northern area, we can see the hotspots include, for example, Merseyside, uh, Great Manchester, uh, South Yorkshire, and uh, uh, Tye and Well and Teesside, and somewhere in uh, some some parts in Cumbria and also Lancashire. And uh, but if we move to the second period, you can see <coughs> this has uh, changed with the traditional. Um, Seven wash uh, line as the um, divide divide line, and uh, also we can see the hotspots. These hotspots, they actually is a mirror image of the um, urban functional area that is defined by Eurostat's um, urban audit. So basically, you can see these um, cities and their hinterlands become the become the key areas um, of the uh, COVID-19 uh, hotspots. So we also run some uh, some uh, a, a model called the spatial spatially fitted multi-level models to capture both multi-level and also spatial independence effects, and also examine how different uh, um, demographic like the age groups and uh, socioeconomic and spatial contextual variables were associated with um, various um, infection rates. 
Last message, integrating GIS with um, diverse data to explore environmental determinants of health inequality. And we can see uh, in Greater Manchester from the left map, 8 out of 10 local authorities have the higher than England average level of an obesity issue for kids. And then, um, so this is another project we are working on uh, with colleagues from the University of Toronto, uh, funded by the University of Manchester, Toronto, and uh, Melbourne um, um, uh, joint fund. And for this project, we try to use Google Images to know about the uh, built environment uh, to get to some street level measures to understand the uh, environmental characteristics. Um, and then link it with other socio-demographic variables to understand the underlying of the centrogenic environment so that we can answer how we can improve the health inequality issue, particularly obesity issue. So in summary, um, health inequality is an issue with uh, place concern and we can use GIS to map, to visualize how health inequality and how it's, it's, um, it is related to other factors and also we can use spatial statistics and models to understand the underlying factors. Uh, of course, GIS as a platform, we can combine different types of data, even very uh, currently with other um, like geospatial data, big data, to um, un understand the environmental determinants of health inequality. And finally, I also want to highlight it is a very useful tool for us to communicate with stakeholders and also policy makers. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you, Helen. That was uh, very interesting. I have a question like, uh, I have colleagues that they come from Sheffield or just every day, so I was wondering if you were able to capture that kind of like movement that the people do in the day, regarding, for example, the infection that happened with the COVID. Because, oh, yeah. because I, I, as far as I understand, like what you were showing, there were more like pictures, right? Like, yeah. like assuming that maybe people were like living in the same place and working in the same place during the day. Yeah, I understand your point. Basically, actually, we can do something by using, for example, uh, Google mobility data. But the, 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 the issue is that we, we don't have that type of data. Because people, if they, you have the uh, mobile signals, you can always uh, track their movement. I use the, this type of data uh, for other topics, but not this one, because we don't have access to that type of data. But uh, I do some research relating jobs, housing relationships, and then those type of data for some, not in UK, but for some other countries, they are available, and then I can use that to track people's movements. But I think this is a very, very good point to, to see. But um, again, that's why we, we, we use that two periods, because uh, the first period, if you still remember, we most, in most of the time, we were in lockdown. And the second period, um, yeah, there's, there were some release, but still for uh, some northern cities, we still had some restrictions. So even the mobility and, um, issue is not a major factor. But we can see the spatial pattern. It's very clear, northern, south. Yeah. yeah. But I have one more question. I would like to discuss it. How easily would it be for you to pick up what you've done and apply to another country? Uh, this one? Yeah. yeah, it can be easily applied to any countries, I think. And even this one, I think, can be applied to any other relevant uh, topics. For example, I worked with um, uh, TFGN, uh, Transport for Greater Manchester. They want to know, uh, like, a spatial pattern of um, um, different small areas, like their uh, because they want to in implement something called a car club, electric vehicle car club, to reduce the carbon emission, but they want to know where they, they should implement this type of policy. So they need to understand, uh, for example, the like, location of um, different uh, like household types, uh, like a terrace house or a detached house. Then they can, and also deprivation and other factors. 
And so I think it can be applied to a lot of different topics. Thank you. Thanks, Helena. Thank you.